uh, yeah, for no reason. Brian Pillman Jr. was just that was like the most random addition to the to to the battle royal, and I thought that was funny. Uh, Heath Miller came out dressed as Sting. That's the stank you're talking about. Yeah, we we loved uh, fucking stank. Um, who else? We talked about Alex Kozlov. Um, that's about the, the the main ones. My favorite, my favorite, the, the, the Brian Pillman Jr. being in the match. And the commentators the whole time are just applauding his ability to sell and bump. Like, <laughs> I love that. I love. I love it. That. It is fucking awesome. It's the shit you you don't get that shit in any other wrestling, and, and it's great. Um, then we had Dave Penzer, which was awesome to fucking see, and my god, he's looking old. And uh, he introduced a contract on a pole match. Which, well, it was a contract on a tree match. Which yes, exactly. That's it was a uh, purse. <laughs> nailed to a tree is what it was <laughs> which again is just like this is what this is about it's complete parody you used to have a briefcase hanging over the ring with a ladder this is just a purse that's nailed to a tree Without but they weren't going to start the... that match that that isn't what happened <laughs> but we did end up uh we ended up having a uh Nature Boy Paul Lee. Woo! We see him pull up to the event. Well, actually, actually, hold up. Before that, we've seen uh, Mike Bennett selling selling pills to Sex Ferguson. <laughs> yep. What kind of pills? I don't know. <laughs> These little, uh, th- those were fun little things. Oh, we yeah. got Nature Boy Paul Lee. And for those of you who don't know, Nature Boy Paul Lee is a wrestler from the uh, early to mid-90s who literally made his reputation on just biting Ric Flair's style. He did the whole Ric Flair thing. Um, and he, and I think everybody says he was good enough to be a mid-card guy if he hadn't have played the Ric Flair card, but as soon as you play the Ric Flair card, unless you're better than Ric Flair, it doesn't work. And Paul Lee is not even close to Ric Flair. Um, so it was great for me as an old school fan to see Paul Lee show up. He had his car with woo on the front and Nate on the plates. And he took on Frankie Coverdale. Yes. And, um, Nature Boy kind of got Frankie Coverdale in a headlock and started uh, punching him and wooing every time he punched him. <laughs> and they just got sick of that and quit quit airing the match. Yeah, <laughs> they do that a lot in this the event. <laughs> they do that a lot. They're just like, ah, oh, this is bullshit. Let's go to the next thing. I love that. Uh, <laughs> I love I love when Paul Lee's walking to the ring and he he's walking by Maria Bennett dancing in a bikini. And he like looks and stops Shallow and smiles hell. at her and walks on and has this big overweight lady in a bikini. It's that, Big that, Bertha so just funny. dancing. So funny. And it's just shallow howled it. For again, for no reason. It has yeah. nothing to do it's, with anything. It's just, just there. That's just what they did. <laughs> Talk I about lo- that after it. after Chico won the battle royal. Chavo's on on Chavo Guerrero's on on commentary in this match because obviously uh, Chico El Luchador is played by Rocky Romero. <laughs> but Chavo, no way! What? Re- <laughs> what? I don't. What? Did I just ruin your childhood. <laughs> you, 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 fuck! It's still real to me, bro. <laughs> But Chavo's sitting there, sitting there on commentary, like threatening to kill him. He was made in like Bolivia or something. He wasn't even made in Mexico. I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> I'm gonna teach him a lesson he won't forget. He'll really be dead, so he may forget it. But he's gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then he goes and shoots at him with a with a shotgun, with a little BB gun, <laughs> and uh, misses him. Chasing him with a butcher knife and shit throughout the event. It's so good. <laughs> Um, 
Then we had uh, Stump Kowalski versus George North, uh, which was kind of a parody of George South. I don't know if anybody listening to this knows George South, but that's what it was. This is a hardcore match, <laughs> and um, it's just so much fun. The best part was when he has a uh, – does, he has a, like a, a cake sheet. And he yeah, the sheet pan. Hit, I got that in my notes too. That's yeah, awesome. he goes to hit George North <laughs> in the head, and then when they switch, it turns into what a kendo stick. Yeah, right? just to do it. Yep. <laughs> and it's like the shittiest kendo stick because it's made out of a cardboard box just taped together. Yeah, like, and they even and they call it out on commentary. They're like, yeah. Oh my god, he magically switched his cake sheet <laughs> to a kendo stick. Like, oh. It's so, so fucking awesome. And, of course, if, if those of you who don't know and didn't watch it, Stump Kowalski is a little person. Yes. Uh, George North is not a little person. Um, oh, I also and... love when George North grabs Kowalski in the, the headlock, and then they just go walking. Like... Just it really leaning into as as long as you got him in a headlock, you can go anywhere. You can you control him. <laughs> I, actually, <laughs> you know, surprisingly... And this is an exaggeration, obviously, what happened here. But in um, amateur wrestling, which my son dabbled in amateur wrestling, they teach you as soon as you have your opponent in a headlock, you control where they go. <laughs> oh! Um, and again, they uh, cut away from this match before it's over. <laughs> because, you know, it's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> It really is. Uh, yeah, that whole match, I think, was for the shitty camera edits. And that that's just, it's amazing. It was, it was, it was, it was really fun. And um, I guess we should say later, I, I don't know where to put this in. But later we end up seeing the two of them fighting in um, Gallows' house. Mm. And um, his son is sitting there playing uh, 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 playing with action figures with a couple other guys. And his son actually ends up kicking North into Kowalski. And... Uh, <laughs> and... and uh, that's kind of how that segment ends. I, I think it's fun that Gallo's son gets involved. Um, there were there are a couple other guys there, and I don't know who they are. Kurt Hawkins was there. It was it was Gallo's kid or his two was sons. Was it Kurt Hawkins? Yeah, and Brian Myers or Kurt oh, Hawkins. Okay, Brian important. Myers. There you go. Okay, yeah. okay. I didn't. I honestly didn't recognize him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of fun. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was Gallo's son that ended up kicking him, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Fun, fun stuff. And then later on, like a whole lot of shit happened in between that. But then later on, they, uh, they ended up ending the segment when they came back. This is about halfway through the (laughs) pay-per-view when, uh, Kowalski ends up winning after knocking North down a a slide at their pool area. <laughs> Into a pool. Can we just call that the finish? This is so shitty. Yeah, the <laughs> match is done. Nobody cares about this shit. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a real finish. They just ended it. But then they pan over and we see Paul Lee still punching and wooing on, on Coverdale. Just woo, woo. Woo! <laughs> he's just he's still having fun with him. Those were some of my favorite spots when the matches kind of overlap throughout. Oh, like, it was great. well after you had forgotten about them. Like Yeah, you, you figured that they were done with them and they came back. I guess in the uh in the showbiz world they call that a callback. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. So then we had a Teddy Long sanctioned tag team match. This is one of the best things ever. This is, this I think this is one of my high points of the whole whole thing. 
The Satani Long comes out and sets up this tag team match. It's the 80s Russians taking on the Jungle Kittens. The Jungle Kittens. God, I love them. <laughs> Which totally isn't a jab at Jurassic Express at all, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I love, because this match, like, the... The commentary's shitting on them from the time they're coming out. Both teams get an entrance, which doesn't happen, I don't think, at any other point in this pay-per-view. And they definitely call to it, oh, he didn't even get an entrance a bunch of times. Uh, But this, they they had, like, a decent in-ring work match. And the commentary team spent the entirety of this fast-paced paced tag team squash match talking about the referee in the ring wearing a hat and how cool he is (laughs) and this was the one match where they actually worked yeah like this was a legit match (laughs) totally speaking to wwe's tag team division right (laughs) but then um the russians won but long said that this wasn't the 80s this was the 90s, player, <laughs> which just shows how delusional he is anyways, that it's, he thinks it's still the 90s, and they brought out Raven's Flock. We've seen uh, Sick Boy, we've seen Lodi, and of course we've seen Big Ron Reese, who wrapped himself up in toilet paper, and for folks, I don't know how many folks will get this reference, Pasty, I'm not sure, but I'm going to explain it. Back in Halloween Havoc 96, Hulk Hogan threw, well, he he had a sumo wrestling match with monster trucks on the top of a skyscraper with the giant. That already sounds like, that already sounds like that's the weirdest fucking thing, and it's not. So then Hulk Hogan threw on uh, the giant over the building before their actual in-ring match. And again, sounds like the weirdest thing, but it isn't. Happened in 2020, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, when the main event came, Hulk Hogan's in the ring, and Andre the Giant comes out. Not a, or not Andre the Giant, I'm sorry. Paul White the Giant. The big show, if you will. Yes. Comes out. Not a scratch on him. And he's fighting Can we Hulk call Hogan. him Nandre the Giant? We can call him not. We should call him Nandre the Giant. <laughs> so during the match, the Yeti shows up, which is just a giant guy wrapped in gauze. Looks like a mummy. Why a mummy is a Yeti? I don't fucking know. Nobody knew. And um, Nandre the Giant has Hogan in a bear hug, and the Yeti comes behind him and hugs him in another bear hug. And they both ensue to thrust their groins into Hulk Hogan <laughs> to end Halloween Havoc uh, 1990. I, I said 96. I believe it's 95. 1995. The Yeti. <laughs> so Ron Reese is best known for butt fucking Hulk Hogan. <laughs> and he came out with the toilet paper wrapped around him in a in, in a parody of the Yeti. So I, I thought that was awesome. You know what? Honestly, I don't know how many people caught that, but for the people that did, it was the most funniest it was fucking great. thing ever. It was great. We loved, we loved a Yeti butt-fucking Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Let's just be honest. And and we loved the flock, the fact that Sick Dude, Boy was the flock. Was there. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Where's Raven? Everybody's been waiting for Raven this whole time. I kind of thought he might actually be there. I I was expecting him, to be honest. Uh, and he didn't show up. But we did get some other guys. We got yes, Rhino. We did. we did. We got BPJ again. Brian Pillman Jr. Um, we got Rim uh, Job. We got, yeah, yeah, Kim Chi came out. <laughs> And I don't think it's the original kimchi, but they got a good kimchi outfit. Yeah. And they renamed him Rim Job. For those yes. of you who don't remember kimchi, he was a manager back in the day, most famously associated with uh, Kamala. Um, we had Chavo riding a toy pony. Chavito. No, that was uh, Pepe or Pepe. <laughs> Pepe, as Luke Gallows called him. 
um, those of you might remember in WCW when he turned insane when Eddie uh, Eddie was trying to break him, and then Eddie finally broke him, and he came out, and he was insane, and he started writing.